This is the telescope that uh, um, I just received today. And um, the Skywatcher Heritage 100 is a Maxatov Newtonian. No, sorry, it's a Newtonian and a Dobsonian mount. I bought it mainly for the mount of it, but I know that it's a very wide angle uh, telescope and I can use it also. Let's just open it and see. Okay, this is the box opened. As you can see, the telescope is this. Well packaged telescope. I like this red color. That's beautiful. Let me see if I can take it out. Okay, this is the telescope itself. I loved it because it has this uh, um, dovetail attachment head that it can actually attach any telescope with this bracket, dovetail bracket, and it, uh, we call it Brixen uh, bracket. And that means that it can be used with anything. So, let's see how it is. It has. To, it comes with two eyepieces. The eyepieces are these standard eyepieces of the Skywatcher and a Barlow lens, 10 millimeter and super 25 wide angle. Here we are now in Shropshire, and tonight will be dark, completely. Hopefully, it has one of the darkest uh, night skies, free from light pollution in the UK, after Wales mountains of the world where the space guard observatory is but here we have also a good uh, environment and this is the skywatcher heritage uh, f4 telescope is a heritage 100 millimeter dobsonian i love this stand of it i can use it with my uh, uh, 18 millimeter refractor and uh, that this is the reflector Skywatcher one that I've uh, installed here. As you can see, the moon is in the sky. So, and we are looking forward to see the moon. I can look at the moon with this 40 millimeter. millimeter Plus all eyepiece. It's quite wide angles. It's one of the best eyepieces I've seen. It's quite cheap. I bought it probably for ten pound to eight pound. It's one of the widest field of view I've ever seen. And uh, let me look at the moon now. Okay, I'm now using also the Skywatcher um, Heritage 4-inch, um, 100mm focal lens, 400mm and F-ratio 4. This gives you the widest angle possible. And because it has no collimation screws, I feel that the image of the Jupiter is out of collimation. I cannot see much detail. I see barely some of the um, 
cloud belts, nothing more than that, barely. Uh, maybe south and uh, north of course are belt, and not easy visible. I wish it could uh, be collimatable. Even the little Gilbert that I had as a you know, the kid, was you could collimate it. This one you cannot collimate it. It's a widest angle uh, uh, telescope, so it's for deeper sky observation, quite good. But uh, for the planetary, I mean, in this case, Jupiter is not good. Maybe it's good for the moon, but uh, uh, for the planets like Jupiter, you don't see much details. So out of these uh, telescopes, uh, so far, the best one is that refractor although it has a lot of chromatic aberration then comes this uh, without chromatic aberration the MIDI TX105 but uh, the clarity is less of course it is just out of the warm room and to the uh, to this environment the uh, refractor was ready to observe this probably needs a little bit you know acclimatization temperature equival equilibrium and this one, just out of collimation, you cannot use it really for this kind of observation of the planets. And this is called watching Newtonian. Uh, although I had the widest field of view, and I used the eyepiece, which was a 4mm scale watcher Nirvana, uh, it didn't show much detail on the planet mainly because it was not possible to collimate it the telescope is out of collimation it's good for wide angle view of the deeper sky objects as i mentioned this uh, sky watcher heritage 100 uh, millimeter telescope is not good for observing planet probably for the moon but not much even for that but is excellent for wide angle views wide field of view of the deeper sky objects i'm looking at the uh, m42 great orion nebula and the stunning image quality and it's easy to even capture, a, a, you know, a astrophoto with your mobile phone. I'm using just this guy, what's a 25 millimeter Super uh, MA eyepiece. This came with this telescope on its own. On a small Dobsonian mount, they, they come. That's excellent. I'm using it in this uh, Alter Sabre because uh, it's easier for me. It rises at the height. And I will put the astrophoto I've taken of the Orion Nebula, and it's beautiful. The actual image, when you see it, is stunning. Okay, this is astrophoto I took with this eyepiece and this telescope, and it's uh, stunning. As you can see at the margin of it, uh, we have some, uh, the mirror is uh, is spherical, it's not paraboloid, so you can see some, you know, uh, coma at the corners. And just now, if we try to take an astrophoto of the um, M45, the plate is the star cluster, famous star cluster. It was really nice and I was able actually to take the whole cluster. It's really wide angle, really excellent in that sense. I have tried it with a lot of telescopes. None of them show this as good as this one. The really wide angle view of this telescope. This telescope hey, reminds here. me of the AstroScan uh, 2000. That is also four inch, four and a half inch. Uh, this is easier, it's cheaper, it's available. The Stroscan is not available and you you cannot get it unless it's second hand. It's not easy to get it. This telescope is excellent for deeper sky. I recommend it f for that for that purpose. Uh, for the planetary, probably you should get a little refractor, 80 millimeter or 100 millimeter, four inch will be enough. Okay, you have bought a lovely, beautiful um, uh, Skywatcher Heritage, 100 uh, uh, millimeter telescope. Beautiful colors. I wish they had a, this color for the refractors, a little golden or something like that. But anyway, it's a very beautiful telescope. It's a very capable, better than whatever I could have when I was a kid. And it has a very good mirror, I must say that. And the image you get with this is quite sharp. The thing is that the telescope has an F number, which is only four. That means it's a fast telescope. It gives you a very wide angle view. But if you want to watch objects which are like a uh, moon or Jupiter and you want to see more details on them, uh, it's better to have a telescope which has a higher F number. Uh, higher F number means, what is F number, first of all? F number is the 
focal length of the telescope. So the light path from here to here, which is 400 millimeter, divided by the aperture of the telescope. So aperture of the telescope is 100 millimeter. F number, uh, the focal length is 400. 400 divided by 100, uh, all, both of them are in millimeters, gives you the number of F4. You can actually increase the F number if you reduce the D, the diameter. So if I can, by one mean, reduce the F number, the, the D number, I go with a, a lower, uh, a higher F uh, ratio and that helps me to actually see more details on the moon better details or more stable with a sharper crisper uh, and the planets it practically makes it a slower telescope in the astronomical terms this is a fast telescope f number is low or we can make it to f number 10 or 20 19 uh, i can make it to be uh, slower and that means make it, make, makes it a practically a planetary telescope also. There is a, a aperture stop here, but this is at the center and it is uh, obstructed by the central obstruction here, the primary, the secondary mirror here. So if you want to avoid that, we can um, make an off-center circle like the one that is here. And for that, I will show you how to make one. I will show you. Okay, this is a telescope actually on the beautiful Dobsonian. I bought this telescope for just the Dobsonian amount of it, but the telescope itself is really good quality. Let me dismantle it and I will show you how to do it. Okay, as you can see, I have now the uh, telescope uh, optical tube assembly separated from the Dobsonian mount. I must say I have two of this telescope because of this Dobsonian mount. I use it in my other refractors. And one of them is actually on this one. So it's a very good, uh, versatile Dobsonian mount. And it worth every penny that you spend on this. So I'll put the Dobsonian mount. I don't need it at the moment. I just go for the reduction of, uh, reduction of the uh, aperture to make the F number larger. So we go ahead with that. So for this purpose, I need a piece of card. I didn't, my card was really odd shaped. I already cut pieces of it. So I joined two pieces of it together to make it equal to the uh, circle of this telescope. Okay, I now remove the cap of the telescope and I put this over this circle. I'll show you. Okay, I'll put it upside down on the piece of card. I give a little bit edges around it so it will not be exactly touching the edges because I want to use these edges for making the rim around it. Okay, first. Now first, first, I go for marking this circle. Okay, I use a pencil or a pen to mark this circle. Okay, it's better that of course your card be black or dark. In this case, this is blue, so black is better even. So I have marked the circle, now I can cut it. But before cutting, I want to leave some straps. So I put this kind of squares about one centimeter we don't need to measure it just by hand is enough something like that and i fill around it with this uh, strap so i can later uh, turn them fold them and uh, attach the rest at the edge to it so now i have made uh, all these square shaped markings around the edge okay now i'm going to make my uh, off axis aperture. For this, I will use this circle. You can use a coin or anything. This is, I think, around 35 millimeter. Uh, it should not reach the center. If it reaches the center, it will be, again, uh, it comes in the, the, the secondary mirror blocks a part of it. So it should be smaller than 30, 35, 30. You can adjust it, of course. You can make it a little bit smaller. It could be bigger. Uh, you can have several of these to put it on your telescope to see which one actually is better. For different brightness of the objects, for moon and for planets, you can use different aperture stops. And let me now do this. I'll put a circle around here. It should be uh, touching the edge here, almost. And I will now put the circle there. 
Okay, I've now drawn my circle and I will remove it. So what I have to do now is to, with the scissor, to take this part out. And then I take all these uh, spaces between these edges out also. I will show you the result. Cutting this with a scissor, you can make a hole in the middle or somewhere in the middle. And then from there, make your way toward this and then cut the circle. Okay, as you can see, I've not cut it and I just left the last bit to show you how it is. Now I cut that last bit also. Okay, I've cut the last bit and I remove it now. I have now my off axis uh, fill the stop, uh, yeah, off axis aperture stop here. And now I cut the rest of the stuff, I will show you. Okay, you can see what I'm doing now, okay? And I'm cutting this, and when I'm finished, I will turn them this way and join them with a piece of paper all together. So they will go like that on the telescope tube. Okay, now the aperture stop is finished, uh, almost. The only thing is that when you are here at this area, you get thin. And one way of avoiding this is just to put your circle a little bit away from the edge. But uh, here I made that mistake. But anyway, I gave it a bit thickness out of the circle, as you can see. So I didn't exactly went on the line. I just moved a little bit out of it. So at this stage, the, uh, the aperture stop is ready. You can just sellotape it on the top. But um, if you want, you can just you bend these edges, all these edges. I will show you. Okay, you can bend all the edges as I as I shown here, and join them with a strip of this uh, cardboard. I, I've run out of it, so if you have one for yourself, a little bit left, you can do it. You can do it with a different color material. It doesn't need to be the same color. And uh, then what you will do, you put it like that on your telescope. At this stage is ready. You can just sellotape it. Just put one sellotape here, one sellotape here. You can remove it when you don't use it. But I recommend you build that edge so it could be something easy to remove and put without damaging your beautiful artifact and your kind handicraft. So that is ready. Now I have a off-axis aperture stuff. My uh, my F number is yet the same. For focal. Uh, length is 400 by my diameter of the aperture the opening light gathering opening is uh, almost half or less than half uh, this was 100 this is now probably three or four centimeter so 400 divided by uh, f 40 four centimeter 40 millimeter that means uh, 400 divided by 40 which is 10 now i have a telescope which is a uh, which is f10 the F number, focal ratio number, focal length divided by aperture opening, is makes it 10. So it's very uh, uh, slower telescope. Uh, it's very good for viewing the planetary surfaces, for moon, for other things. So because it practically you have reduced the glare, the excess light that may dazzle your eye or uh, hide the details that you want to see in the lower light, just make a little reduction in the light. That makes it possible. You can make several of these. You can make it smaller than this. You can make it a little slighter, slightly bigger. And if you make two of these, actually you can use that two apertures for achieving the accurate, the most accurate focus for yourself. You have to practice on that. This is another issue uh, that you will learn. But at this stage, this is ready. You can just sellotape it here, sellotape here, or as I mentioned, uh, use a cardboard uh, uh, band here, a piece of cardboard, something around here, to join these uh, tabs and make something like this that you can put it on and lift it at, at, at your own will. That's done. Now you have a full aperture stop.